السلام عليكم وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب يشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله تنات بالبلاس تفسير أو سورة ياسين right and also tonight inshallah we will make a, a conclusion about this surah let's read the surah inshallah a'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim awalam yaru al-insan anna khalaqna min nutfatim fa idha huwa khasim mubin wa darba lana matana wa nasiya khalqa قال من يهي الإظام وهي رميم قل يهيها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِقَادِرٍ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلُقُ مِثْلَهُمْ بَلَىٰ وَهُوَ الْخَلْقَاتُ الْعَلِيمُ إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ فَسُبْحَانَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ مَلَكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ So ayah number 77 Allah said أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَوْا مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Ayah dah syam? Syam syedin? Okay, Mubashir? Assalamualaikum. Uh, translation? Yeah. Does not man see that we have created him from nutfa, mixed male and female discharged semen drops? Yet behold, he stands forth as an open opponent. The third section of this final passage raises the question of resurrection and reckoning. Is man then not aware that it is we who create him out of a gamity? And then he becomes he becomes flagrantly contentious. He comes up with arguments against us, forgetting how he himself was created. So Allah asks question: Awalam yaro does not mean see. In yaro in Arabic means see can be with your eyes or see your mind. Right? Allah SWT asks us to reflect. Right? And who the insan? You know anybody? Any human being. Anna khalaqna we created him min nutfah. From the sperm. From liquid that, you know, no, you, you, even you don't want to look at it. Right? Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, now addressing the people who are denying God, people who are arrogant, so how we, where you come from? What is your original? Right? Allah. You know, nutfa, the sperm that you know come from men, is about three millions. You know, this amount of three million, only one or two become you. In that nutfa is contain everything. Contain your eyes, your ear your teeth, subhanallah. Yeah. And then this nutva, who, dis, who decide, you know, will become girl or boy, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Because in the Quran said, Ya habu lima yasha inata. Allah give to him, he wish a girl. Or also Allah give what? A boy. Or Allah make a barren. You know, might be a king. A king, he have everything. He marry a woman. You know, like the the Aziz of Egypt. He marry king. You know, 
you know, uh, he can spend million of dollars with Allah. If Allah said, you are barren, you are barren for us. Right? So this had to be, remind people to be humble. Because you're not made of gold or silver from the spoon. Can you imagine that from that or water, fluid, and then you become you know. Right? Uh, and I said, for either, either you know, they were like the word surprise, for either then, when, so like what? Khosim. Qasim is the one who likes to have argument, not only, for example, politely. What? There is God? Who created us? Right? So Qasim, Qasim you know, uh, people who, who argument with arrogant, you know, try to put down his opponent, that's Qasim. Right? You know, you know if, if, you, if you are powerful, you can do whatever you want, and you be you want to be arrogant, yeah. But you know, somebody arrogant and suddenly have stomach ache, whatever. <laughs> How to take? Ah, yeah. So one day, a man he was arrogant. He said, "He's he's like a teacher." He said, "I can bring the alphabet." You know, so I can bring what people before me cannot bring. One student said, Sir, people before you, they bring 28, you know, Arabic alphabet from Alif into Ya. Can you add one, one, one letter now? What? <laughs> All right? Uh, yeah. So that's Allah SWT. Because I had before people was took different type of God and denying God. So Allah SWT. And they and then not only that, Hosim will be they are arrogant. Right? So therefore one day a man was walking, you know, his gender. Sheikh Hassan Basit said, Hey, you know, walk humbly. Do you know who am I? I said, Yeah, I know you. I know your beginning, and I know where you end, and I know what you carry now. So what? You are from Nutfa, from liquid, they don't want to look it. And then you end, you go to the grave. In between, you carry dirt. You know, if there's mirror in your stomach, you eat biryani, you eat uh, ice cream, you know, nobody want to see that. <laughs> There's you carry, how oh, you arrogant? Right? I don't know. وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ قَالَ مَنْ يُهِيَ الْإِضَامَ وَهِيَ رُمِينَ Bashar, thank you. And he puts forth for us a parable and forgets his own creation. He says, Who will give life to these bones when they have rotted away and became dust? It is the creative power of God that transforms that gamut into this awesome, contentious person. What a gulf between origin and end. Yet man finds it difficult to believe that this power can bring him back to life after death. He comes up with arguments against us, forgetting how he himself was created. So, Then Allah give for us an example. Right? What's the example? The people Nasya Khalqa who forget, you know, where they come from, who forget his creation. Yeah. So when people forget, you know, who created them, where they come from, you know, what happened? He become arrogant. So when Hadith said, Anasunyam, people now are sleeping. When they die, they wake up. When they wake up, in the grave. So we are like sleeping now. Because in the grave, you see the reality of everything. Right? Everything that before just promised, you make tasbih, you pray to rock out, you pray at night, you give charity, you will get this and this and this. 
You have to do evil, you get this, this. No, now they are in the grave. Kalla sofa ta'lamun. Right? They see everything. Right? Then Allah tell a story. So these people who forget themselves, who forget his creation, qala man yuhil idhom. You know, he said, who will give life to these bones? He said, the three people refer to this ayah. Some said Abu Jahal. Some said, uh, uh, what do you call, Al-As, and the others one. So it has put Abu Jahal. Abu Jahal came to Rasulullah. He took a bone from someone who died maybe, what, 100 years ago or more. He took the bone and he cut the bone, piece by piece, and they brought to Muhammad Sallallahu Hey, Muhammad, do you think this? People who died long time ago, he become born, and he said, Romim, become dust, will come back alive again, <laughs> right? Uh, so they, they with arrogant, they like to, to challenge, right? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't say you are stupid, you are there. He said like, uh, with, uh, Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu he will give life to them who created them for the first time. And he is the all-knower of every creation. Does a gamut have greater life, power, or value than a crumbled bone? Is not man originated from a gamut? Is the one who made an argumentative man out of a gamut unable to produce a new creation out of a crumbled bone? This is too easy and obvious to merit any lengthy discussion. He who brought them into being in the first instance will give them life again. Yeah. So, so what difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, if people decompose, destroy our body, this uh, in Arabic called usus, in the backbone, they still like a chip, right? They never destroy it, even by nuclear. Subhanallah. As Rasulullah well as said, Everything will decay except that one, you know, the bone tail. So, endangered men, uh, after Allah, uh, the, uh, the angel bore trumpet, everything died, everybody died. Now they're going to sleep, sleep maybe 40, he said 40 years, 40, because of you, we didn't know. Then Allah will send the rain. And that chip will grow. So, that means your body come again. Right? Then Allah will send your spirit, your rope, come back to your body. Right? So they already exist, but Allah is easy. Right? But I would like to, to, to show you, you know, about what Allah creation. You know? That, don't talk about human being. Now. Just look at, look at Allah SWT said in the Quran, Inna Allah la yastahi ayyadiba matalamma ba'udatan fama fawqa. Right. You know, if where I can find the love, what is that thing? Love, yeah. Yeah. God does not stay away from making an example of a man or something above it. Yeah. So this is long time ago when there's no technology, nobody can make can see, you know, about mosquito, how it look like, right? So I want to show you. Now the video, how look like this allocation. Fala, 
Indeed, Allah is not ashamed to present a mosquito as an example or anything that is above it. As for those who believe, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they say, what did Allah intend by this example? The Quran, chapter 2, verse 26. The first question that comes to mind is what does Allah mean when using a mosquito as an example? Essentially, Allah is saying that even a fly is enough to demonstrate his existence. At first glance, you might be thinking, how? But by doing some reflection, it will hopefully make a lot more sense. Let's consider that this verse came down 1,400 years ago to a tribe in the middle of a desert. It is only in the last 200 years that science has made huge progress and knowledge has increased like never before. What we once thought was an insignificant little fly has actually proved to be a phenomenal species full of complexities. Here are some facts that we have come to know. The mosquito egg is always laid in water. As the mother lays her eggs, she sticks them together into an array to form a raft structure to stop them from sinking. From there, the eggs turn into larvae that swim around upside down on the surface of the water whilst breathing through a tube, a bit like a snorkel. The larvae then turn into pupae and then break out as adults with the ability to fly instantly. This small insect that has hatched is currently the deadliest animal in the world. Ever wondered why they have extremely fast reflexes? Well, that's because the mosquito has a pair of compound eyes. Each compound eye is made up of hundreds of mini eyes called lenses that curve around. Each lens takes an image at a different angle which its brain processes. For this reason, the mosquito can see almost everything happening around it at any given time without having to turn around. Physicists have been fascinated by this and have been trying to copy the system to develop self-driving cars, drones and safety cameras to say the least. The mosquito uses carbon dioxide sensors to detect your breath from up to 50 meters away. Once it finds its way into your room, it detects heat from your body to land exactly where it will start to suck your blood. This is how they see you in the dark when you are asleep. Amazingly, the mosquito uses six needles to suck blood in a highly sophisticated manner. First, it removes a protective layer to expose the needles. Then it uses the sharp teeth on the outside two needles to drill through your skin, like a saw. The two inner needles hold the cut open whilst the middle two probe around to find the blood vessel. Once the blood vessel is found, one of the probe needles spits chemicals to numb the pain and help your blood to flow. The other probe needle acts like a straw and starts sucking your blood. As it sucks, its body separates the water and squeezes it out of its back to pack in as many nutrients as possible. Sounds like a surgical operation, right? This is an image of the mosquito's foot. It is made up of a complex array of features that protect it and allow it to land on many different surfaces, such as water, to feed its eggs. As for its wings, the mosquito flaps them about 1,000 times every single second to help it fly. It is clear that this tiny creature we can barely see with the naked eye is packed with many efficient systems allowing it to function and breed. Let's now refer back to the verse in the Quran. After Allah presents the example of a mosquito, he then says, and what is above it? The Arabic used for this, fama fulqaha, linguistically has many meanings, including what is above it physically and what is above it in size. Guess what? All definitions apply. In terms of size, well, we don't have to look too far into nature to see that a mosquito is nothing compared to what is out there. The universe is so complex, yet so perfect, that it is beyond human comprehension. What about above it physically? Well, 
Scientists have discovered that some mosquitoes have tiny larval water mites that live above them as parasites. Allah continues the verse and says, As for those who believe, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. See, as Muslims, we believe that everything around us screams the existence of a creator. In fact, when we are asked for proof, we respond by asking where the proof isn't, even if it is just a flag. Allah then says, but as for those who disbelieve, they say, what did Allah intend by this example? Isn't this the case? Wouldn't the disbeliever credit all of this to anything other than a creator, such as evolution or chance? Wouldn't the disbeliever still consider the mosquito insignificant and unimpressive? The reality is, we are all so used to the world around us. We are so used to how perfect nature is and how perfectly its laws allow us to sustain life. The fact of the matter is, if all of humanity gathered together, we couldn't create a single fly. And if we gathered all of our knowledge, it wouldn't even be a small fraction of what we still don't know. Yet some of us sadly believe that we have enough wisdom and intelligence to deny there is a creator as a possibility, just because it doesn't make sense. Think about this. To copy just one of the systems in a mosquito, we need years of research and teams of scientists around the world to produce something half as good. Yet the mosquito is lighter than a feather, can hardly be seen, and is jam-packed full of systems and sensors that allow it to live. And remember, the mosquito is only one of millions of different species that are on planet Earth alone, each one having unique characteristics. Isn't this verse so incredibly profound? so subhanallah just only mosquitoes <laughs> imagine other creation yeah the same if you study about the the ankabut right the spider the spider, it builds a house, but the most fragile of houses is the spider's house. Yeah. And very interesting in Russia, that is referred to female. How did Muhammad know that the one who in control, you know, in the group or jama of the spider you know, is the is the female, right? Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Alladhi jana lakum min al-shajar al-akhdar nara, fa idha antum minhu tuqidun." He who produces for you fire out of the green tree. And behold, you kindle therewith. Because you look at this remarkable phenomenon, to which they are often oblivious, is sufficient as convincing proof. Green trees laden with water often produce fire through friction, and then become fuel to the same fire. However, scientific understanding of the nature of the heat green trees receive as they absorb solar energy and retain it, while they are full of water, can only enhance the significance of this phenomenon. As been mentioned in Surah Yasin, Allah mentioned many examples before. Allah mentioned about different kind of fruits, uh, different kind of animals, and so on. So now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala just mentioned one thing because they have connection with the before, right? There's the tree that we see every day. He said even a green tree, right? 
and from them give green tree can produce the fire. Right? So the ulama have different opinion what that means. That uh, some ulama said, you know, it's referred to oil, you know, because before Adam came to this earth, there's many changing happen. And one of them is that there's a roba, like a, a jungle, right? And then jungle the, set a fire and the spear and it go down and they produce the oil. And also, you know, uh, people using the, the wood, right? It's for the fire also, right? So who can do that? Who can produce from the green uh, tree become the, the fire, right? So in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَوَلَيْسَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِقَادِرٍ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَخْلُقَ مِثْلَهُمْ بَلَىٰ وَهُوَ الْخَلَّاقُ الْعَلِيمُ Is not he who created the heavens and the earth able to create the like of them? Yes, indeed. He is the all-knowing, supreme creator. The heavens and the earth are great and wonderful creations. This earth where we live with millions of other species and compared to which we are very little in size and about which our knowledge remains scanty is no more than a small satellite of the sun. Our earth depends totally on the light and heat it receives from the sun. However, the sun is only one out of a hundred million suns in this galaxy which forms our neighboring world. Right? So Allah always when he saw his power, he said, he the one who created the heaven and the earth, right? Because if Allah talk about something that we didn't have any knowledge, I said, what's that, right? Because even the, 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 the sky, the heaven we eat is only the first heaven. We don't want to happen in the second one, the third one, continue. And the Siddhartha Muntaha. So therefore, when I said, Fala uksimu bima tubsirun, Allah swear with what you can see. Right? And then what you cannot see. Like the jinn, the angels, right? The other creation. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi qadirin. Allah an yukhlaqum is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala able to, to create it, you know, uh, like unto that. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing. He said, Bala wa huwa khalaq, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khalaq. Khalaq means the supreme creator. Human being create something, have to be from thing. We cannot came from nothing. So the word in Arabic, they call it khalaq. Khalaq means when Allah creates something from nothing. He created Adam from dust. Right? We come from the, the spoon, right? But can human being create something from nothing? Everything human being create is already example. Even people when the people discover, you know, uh, airplane, for example, they look at the bird, right? Even now, you know, if you when after we study the mosquito, many airplane, you know, that can detect here and there is just learning from that. Allah creation, right? So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have different name called Al-Badi, right? And also, when Allah creates something, not like us, sometimes you need to develop. Remember uh, the first TV was very big, right? And then, oh, even cell phone. I remember when, when I was in Saudi, people carry like this. I was proud and happy. <laughs> Very small. Right? The, so the technology developed. But still, you mean being when you get something, have limit. You you buy the best car. After five, ten years, you need to repair here and there. So Allah created the sun. Did you hear Allah make an announcement? Hey, there's no, no sun tomorrow, we need to repair. Oh no more night, nothing. <laughs> when Allah creates something until this. So therefore, even he said, Wafi anfusikum afala tubsirun. Just look at yourself. How look at it does. You'll be amazed. You know how how our 
our eyes can see the different colors. Our ear can distinguish between the voice. I know the voice of my wife from different, all women, right? <laughs> SubhanAllah. Even the small children, they're not confused with, with my mother. They will find her as my mother. SubhanAllah. Even smell. People smell not the same. Yaqub al salam. He said, Inni la ajiduriha Yusuf. I smell the fragrance of Yusuf. Yusuf is still in Egypt. <laughs> but Allah sent it. SubhanAllah. Right? Even look at Allah, how Allah created us. You know, Allah put eyes here. Right? If Allah put eyes here, they have to be always like this. Look at Allah put the nose close to the mouth. So when you eat, uh, if you have a smell no good, you can stop. But if the nose here, and like this, maybe you forget you're hungry, and halas. <laughs> when you eat, you know, there's machine here to digest the food. Did you turn on the off? No. If Allah SWT asks us to turn on the off, Every time after you eat, maybe you forget. You eat biryani, ice cream, sleep. It's a problem. The machine automatically is working without our control. Allah knows. And also, look at our body. You know, Hamza, your height will be stopped in one day. If people might be on 18, 19, plus. Right? Nice, this. If not, you have to change your house every year. Right? Because you're taller, you can go inside, right? Unless your bed has to be bigger. But some of your body, they grew. Certain time, like the teeth. And they stop. But the hair continue. Imagine if your if your teeth you continue. You go to dentist every year. What? What do you pay? Right? How much you have to pay? A lot of money. Yeah? Innama amruhu idha arada shay'an ayyakura lahu kum fayakun. Verily, his command, when he intends a thing, is only that he says to it, be, and it is. The truth is that God creates this and that, as well as other types of creation effortlessly. It is all the same to him whether the creature he wants to bring to life is large or small. When he intends something to be, he only says to it, be, and it is. This something could be a galaxy, an earth, an ant, or a mosquito. It is all the same, requiring no more than a simple word, be, and it is there. Khalas. Kun bayakun. Allah, right? Innama amruhu. His command. Either or yeah, just he wants. He wants something. Subhanallah. But something Allah wants to teach us a lesson. How many days he created heaven and earth? Six days, right? Sita Tariya. You know, we can say B, right? So long as he teach us, you know, everything has to be gradually. You want to be doctor, you have to be good. Kirigadran, Ramantin, all things. This is the process. Only there. But mostly, I was to said B. B angel, B gene, only when he created us. He makes special. Also in Surah Baqarah, Why the call of Rabbuka lil malaika ti indi jailun fil ardi khalifa. Remember when your Lord said to the angel, I'm about to create on this earth my khalifa, my trusty. Why? Because you are special. You know, if how do you know the announcement important or not? Look at the way they announce. If not important, just put in the wall, newspaper. But if the announcement important, number one, who will make announcement? The president on prime time on the TV. Right? Imagine now, Allah called the angel, I'm going to create Adam. This is <laughs> Right? And also he said, when I fuck to film in Ruby, I blow, you know, to Adam, my spirit. Right? Kun fayakun. Be an atheist. 
But you know Allah SWT will give this B and it is when you are in Jannah. Right? So Mustafa, if you want hamburger now, what do you have to do? You buy the cheese, you buy the right? Then you cook, you take you know, maybe half hour. In Jannah, you said hamburger. No, not feel hamburger, hamburger. What? Right? Or you dream this beautiful woman in the world before. You know, he celebrated his birth. I'm skin. Oh, I want that woman. Yeah, like this. <laughs> Subhanallah. Right? He said in Jannah, when people uh, look at a woman, you know, and then he said, woman going to wear a cloth and uh, have 70 type of color. You know how, how many color you know? How many color you have? Huh? Well, Just here. Yeah. But in Jannah, have 70 color. For example, the woman not wearing uh, white. Wow. White, so beautiful. How about if she wearing black? She didn't have to go to a room and chair, no. You said, Mustafa said, oh, black, wow. Black, so beautiful. How about red? <laughs> he chair it automatically. <laughs> Subhanallah. So everything it looks the Quran. For you, whatever you ask, become manifest there. Right? No, it only belongs to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? Yeah. So therefore, we have to be patient here because in Jannah you get to have a party in Jannah and all kind of drink, include wine. Konya, everything. <laughs> we, we are too far in Mildan and Mukhalla, the Mildan, we carry you. Beautiful youth, carry you. La yusadda'una anha wa la yunzifun. When you drink it, you're not empty second. It's fresh. Right? Fa subhanal nadhi biyadihi malakutu kulli shay'in wa ilayhi turja'oon. So glorified is he and exalted above all that they associate with him. And in whose hands is the dominion of all things. And to him we shall be returned. At this point, the surah gives its final beat, describing the relation between the universe and its creator. Limitless, then in his glory, is he in whose hand rests the mighty dominion over all things. And to him, you all will be brought back. The term mighty dominion describes this relation in its majestic reality of absolute ownership and complete authority over everything in the universe. Then mm -hmm. to him, all will return. Biyadihi, Allah, on his hand, malakut, all dominion. That means everything is belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't have nothing. So therefore, when you lost something, what you said? Inna, linda. Belong to Allah. You know, what means belong to Allah? That means you don't have nothing. That means Allah the owner, Allah can do whatever he wants. Don't get angry. <laughs> Where's my money? <laughs> hey, khalas. If your money will come again. Right? Next story of, of uh, uh, Umm Talha. You know, Umar Talha, she have a boy, a cute boy, maybe about four, three years old. Before her husband leave for business, he was sick, right, a little bit. But husband need to go business for, for a few days. And then on the day that his uh, husband come home, you know, the boy died. You know, many women, when the boy died, she was panicked call here and there, where's my husband? She said to all her family, don't tell my husband about the boy. So very quick, the husband came home. So of course, the first things he asked is about his son. I said, where's my honey? Oh, he's sleeping. He opened the door. No, people died sleeping. Right? 
And on that night, can you imagine that? She cooked for dinner. She added herself and they have the essence. So in the morning, he said, honey, you know, before he could match it, if somebody put with us something as a trust, as a mana, and he wants to take it back, what I supposed to do? Give me back, it's not use. So honey, the boy that Allah gave us, it's belong to him. He took him yesterday. What? You didn't tell me? You have been there and everything? Little bit get married, he went to the matching. And told us, so, can you imagine my wife? I saw her smiling, I said, oh no already. I said, Barakallahu, Barakallahu fi laylati kuma. May Allah bless you what happened last night with your wife. Allah. That may Allah really bless with something that you know, many of uh, auto historian, he said uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with nine children. All of them. And all have experts, some in tafsir, some in hadith. <laughs> and also their grandchildren become scholar. <laughs> Subhanallah. Right? So why? Because biyadihi Everything in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't have nothing. Right? Yeah. So therefore, when somebody died, he said what? Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiwan. We belong to Allah. You know, the one, not we who die. But when the one die is a man, for example. So be what? Inna hu lillah. He belonged to Allah. Why well, said we belong to Allah? You are next. <laughs> you too. I took him, but you are next. Right? So what's the lesson we learn? What's the conclusion? Yeah. So we have six messages for reflection of Surah Yasin. Surah Yasin is an invitation to all human beings to look and reflect on two miracles that Allah has placed in this universe. The Quran representing the recited words of Allah and the universe representing the viewed signs of Allah's power. The surah develops its arguments in six distinct sections. So we have two ayat, right? Ayat that you read it, and ayat also you see outside. So you know, I see Allah has to reflect both. The ayat in Quran and also ayat outside. Yeah, what's number one? The divine words of Allah and the attitude of the heedless. The surah starts with a discussion about the revelation of the Qur'an and its purpose. The Arabs were not used to the concept of a messenger and the Qur'an states that clearly. To warn a people whose forefathers were not warned and so they are unaware. Yeah. Allah saw with the Qur'an. Right? Qur'an full of wisdom. Right? You looking for wisdom is Qur'an. Right? Yeah. And I said, Inna kala minan musalin. Ayu Muhammad are one of the messengers. That means, Muhammad, if all people in Mecca they deny you, I am recognizing. You know, sometimes uh, everybody was didn't, didn't uh, like recognize you. And then the, the boss said, Don't worry, I recognize you. Oh, I see now. Right? Because the, the, the boss is color, right? So, in the beginning, the Quran, Allah SWT after said, Quran full of wisdom and a solar messenger, and then they, they want people, right? That's number one. And it's very important also. So, one of the problems that we didn't do mostly, we did not want people. You know, sometimes we have science, stop science, and science, it's to want people, right? You know, there's construction, they always seems to sign. So we also the same something we need to remind people, give a sign. To reflect on history. The next section mentions the story of a community that received three messengers and one supporter. Then from the furthest part of the city, a man came running. He said, my people follow the messengers. That man had so much passion for his community, despite the fact that they ended up murdering him. And while he was entering paradise, he still had this love for his people. Yeah. 
So Salat Yasin was the field in Makkah, and then Osman Tala want to remind these people in Makkah, hey, I want you to reflect the story, the story that happened to people before us, right? And what happened to them will happen to you too, right? Remember the story that Allah SWT sent two messengers, they want to accept, and what? He sent what? The third one. Still they rejected, right? And then Allah SWT said, I said, a man, who's man with me, right? That means he's not prophet, not scholar, regular man. He believes, he has small knowledge, but he, he has responsibility. The, the duty of Dawah is not only the messenger, the Imam, the say, I have to do. And this is my people. And he said, yes, are he running? Look at this, came running to Mahanamo. Looked like this is my, my responsibility. And then when he came, he said, he didn't say, hey, Kafir, no. He said, my people, they are calling. <laughs> Four messenger. They come to you, not quite, not quite donation. They just want to bring you to the good thing, right? And then what happened? They killed also the man, remember it? The man of all his hadith called Habibun Najjar. Habibun Najjar. The soul has smelled his, his grief, you know, when he passed by it for the Islam of Allah. Habibun Najjar. I said, you too. You know how they killed him? They put in the ditch only their head like this. Before they even they kill them, they take like a soul and a skin it. Can you imagine that? So therefore when, when one of Sahaba in the Makkah, Hubba bin Arth, Rasulullah, you know, isn't good with us? You know why we are like this? Humiliated in Makkah. People die before suffering. Rasulullah said, be patient. And they said, people before you, they put in the deeds and they skin it. They didn't change. So don't worry, right? Be patient. So Allah, Allah referred to, to this, right? So, and then also this man, when he died, he didn't say, God, don't forget them. Okay? <laughs> Look at what he did to us, right? No revenge. I wish my people know what happened to me now. Allah honor me. Bima ghafarli rabbi wa jalani min al mukramin. Allah forgive me and Allah honor me. No revenge. Right? So, number one, we learn from Surah Tin that Quran full of it and Muhammad is messenger and Allah one people. Second one, Allah asked us to reflect this to his story. You know, even every day when you pray, Allah reminds us with two stories. Two history. What's that? Magdub and Dolin. Magdub, the people who have knowledge, but you don't practice their knowledge. Dolin, they do a lot of good deed, good thing, but without knowledge. Ni ni do it. Ihdina siratul mustaqim. Most of the people of knowledge, and also they practice their, their knowledge. What number three? Look around you and reflect on God's creation. The surah moves on with the discussion on the present, as though it tells its audience, if you don't want to reflect on history and learn from it, then at least look at the miraculous signs of the creation of Allah. There's a sign for them in the lifeless earth. We give it life and we produce grain from it for them to eat. Yeah. You see all kind of fruit, right? Anything. That's not enough. Okay, you don't want to think about the flag. Then look it around you. Who make that three different color? You know, if you see the color, the three color what? Mostly green, right? The sky blue. Why the sky was red? Right? <laughs> so then, you know, the Japanese, their eyes are small. Why? They're watching the sun. <laughs> Just looking. <laughs> right? I don't know why. You know, one thing, as long as I said, the mu'min is like the like a tree. Say so what tree is it? Everybody hears it. Ibn Abbas was young. 
and it was the death penalty. Right? Why you didn't say uh, Rasulullah, yes, death penalty. Why you didn't say banana? I didn't know banana was banana. I don't know banana tree. But the, the Arab, they see death tree every day. So Allah want, uh, Rasulullah want us to invite you know something, you see something every day, we don't pay this. Right? You know, said so the woman like, you know, uh, dead palm tree, everything from it is beneficial. Nothing wasted. The leaf or what? For the truth used to, to be. The, and then the pillar, for, the trunk for the pillar. And the fruit, of course. <laughs> right? All beneficial. So Allah SWT once said, women have to be like this. You know, people get benefits from your mouth, from your thought, and so on. The stubborn and the blind. Even when people refuse to reflect on history and fail to look at the universe around them, Allah still invites them again. Yet when they are told, beware of what lies before and behind you, so that you may be given mercy. They ignore every single sign that comes to them from their Lord. You know, they have but remember the moments in the beginning, they have four barriers. Right? Front, up, and down. What, what, what's the barrier in the front? Future. You don't want to see the future. Right? The behind is the scene. Right? Yeah. Consequences of disbelief on the day of judgment. The next section takes us into the future, to the day of resurrection. So this is the fire that you were warned against. Enter it today because you persistently rejected the truth. Right? Before the Allah talk about Jannah and they say this is okay, you deny it, this is the end. Right? Conclusion. The attitude of arrogance towards Allah's signs. Can man not see that we created him from a drop of fluid? Yet, lo and behold, he disputes openly, producing arguments against us, forgetting his own creation. He says, who can give life back to bones after they have decayed? Say, he who created them in the first place will give them life again. He has full knowledge of every act of creation. So that's the conclusion of Surah Yasin, right? So in the beginning, Allah talked about the Quran, Messenger and the warning Allah, and then ask to, to what you call to reflect about the history, right? Allah SWT asks us to reflect about all the thrown you, the many creation, right? Then Allah SWT remind again, look at the end of people who are arrogant, they don't know to accept, right? The truth. So therefore, why is that they are seen? Qalbul Quran, the heart of Quran, and you correct to read the Lord Surah Yasin, right? Yeah, this is the subject, how to increase Iman when your faith is weak. How to increase Iman? See, this among them, you know, knowledge, a lot obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. When a believer reaches to that stage where everything in his heart depends on what pleases uh -huh. Allah, that is true Iman. Yeah. Talking. The worker, you know, practically, you know, sometimes you go to the doctor. When you go to the doctor, you know, the one who have talk or what? This doctor knows me. Right? This only means if Allah didn't ask you to go to the doctor, we don't go to the doctor. If you say, oh, Hamza, you know, I want to doctor this and this, then I want to doctor David, who oh, is the best doctor. <laughs> You know, it's not the worker. <laughs> They're only the mean. Yeah. The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. Although both are good, strive to do that which will benefit, which will benefit you and seek the help of Allah and do not feel helpless. Yeah. I mean, throw here, I mean, physically, spiritually. So Allah wanted it. Uh, 
you know, Muslim always have exercise. You know, the Sahaba, you know, remember that uh, the Roman, they sent the doctor to Medina and doctor for two, two years, just take relax. And then he, he, he complained. Nobody come. Because <laughs> the Sahaba exercise. In the daytime, I can say the arrow and run, right? At night, they make the hajjud, right? right? So therefore, Umar bin Khattab, when he see one day, a man had uh, he said, hey, what's this? <laughs> a man is like an airplane ride. The higher you go up, the smaller the things on earth look. Yeah. Allah Akbar. Everything is small. So therefore, when, when you become a lost slave, you become higher because everything is nothing. When you become slave people, you become humiliated. Yeah. The more faith we have that Allah controls everything in our lives, the more we'll feel happy and content. Leave your trust in Allah alone. Yeah, Hajar, he was in the desert, but he's happy. Ibrahim <laughs> was in the fire. Did we say you need me? You? No. Uh, right? Bilal. You know when people after finish everything, Bilal, no? He's still like a good house, everything. Bilal, when when you feel the sweetness of Iman? Allah, when they put me in the sand and they hit me, I said, ah, ah. <laughs> That's the, the feel, the sweetness of Iman. Right? SubhanAllah. Yeah. So, any question? Big do inshallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, yafi ni amma kafi mazida ya rabbana na kafhamdu. Kama yan bilagi bi jani wajika wa adimi sultanik. Allahumma salli wa salli wa nasi nadin wa ala sahbi ajma'in. Allahumma anfa'na bima alam tana wa kina adab al-nar. Allahumma jal al-Qur'an rabiha qulubina wa nur basurina. واجل حسن وكشف همنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم على الله رب العالمين آمين